In this supplementary tutorial, I want to make sure that a couple of conventions and conversions about the Fresnel derivations are made clear. The first thing is to talk about what direction we consider a positive reflection coefficient to be. And for that, I need to draw the interface again and consider a, an incident k vector, a reflected k prime vector and a refracted q vector and if we consider the s polarized case the convention is that we write the plane wave incident with a magnitude e in corresponding to a vector pointing out of the page at you we also write the reflected wave, plane wave, with ER associated with the plus Z hat direction, the, the direction coming out of the board at you, and we write the transmitted wave the same way. So the sign convention there is pretty much what you would expect. However, let's contrast that with what we do when we have p-polarized light. So in that case, get our interface back and our and our same waves here in the p polarized case we start off by saying that the incident light we choose a direction and we'll say the incident electric field oscillation is in this direction so suppose I associate that direction with the incident. It's perpendicular to the k vector and it's in the plane of the page instead of being perpendicular to the k vector and out of the plane of the page. Now we have a problem with the reflected wave. It's not obvious whether we should point an arrow this way or this way. Which should be the unit vector for the reflected wave? And we're going to choose this as the answer. It's the unit vector perpendicular and pointing in the upward half space. So why is that? The reason is that if you imagine this reflection event taking place at normal incidence, you'll notice that at normal incidence we have the incident and reflected electric field with the convention of pointing in both positively out of the page at you. They're pointing in the same direction. We want to retain that convention here as well. So here, if we take a normal incidence case, you'll notice that E incident would be pointing straight up, and here's E reflected. It would also be pointing straight up. What we're saying in this case is that we're choosing the convention that when theta incident equals zero degrees, we want RP, the formula for the reflected wave, the reflection coefficient RP, we are defining as being the same sign as the reflection coefficient for RS. So this is a sanity check you can do on your Fresnel reflection coefficients. If you calculate two things, it better be that at normal incidence, RP formula gives you the same exact number and the same sign as the RS formula. If we continue to follow that through, no big surprise that E transmitted, we also have pointing into the upward half space. For the S polarized light, the all three plane waves have their uh, vector direction asso associated with coming out of the board at you, and the vector direction associated with the reflection coefficients is into the upward half space for P polarized light. This has an important consequence for the direction of the B field. Notice you always have for every wave, you have that E cross B is in the direction in the direction of the of the wave vector. And I'm writing that out because I don't want to say K because some of the other wave vectors are K prime and Q. So E cross B is always in the direction of the wave vector. Here, that means that the magnetic field is coming out of the board at you. That's what makes E cross B be this direction. Transmitted, same deal. But notice for this plane wave, the wave is moving this way. And that requires, when you work it out 
I'm drawing an X there, B reflected is heading into the board. And so I want you to note mathematically, this is very relevant for deriving P polarized reflection coefficients, since we do that in terms of magnetic field, notice that balancing the B field which is parallel to the interface, no, the total B field on the left equals the total B field on the right. And what that means is that B incident minus B reflected equals B transmitted. If you don't see that right away, I could also write it this way. I could say that the, as a vector sum, B in times plus is associated with the plus Z hat direction plus B reflected, which is associated with the minus z hat direction equals b transmitted associated with the plus z hat direction. And of course this equation gives you the same scalar equation as this one. These are some important conventions about what we associate these coefficient numbers with in terms of vector directions. Now let's talk about some conversions. It's already been said in a previous video that if we think about the k prime vector if we talk about the k prime vector, we know that the y components are the same for, for k and k prime, because all uh, of these three wave vectors have the same downward y component. So we know that k prime y equals k y, and we also know that the length of these two vectors is the same because they're in the same medium. So the total length k prime equals k. And that must mean that the x components, in order to make that work, the x components must be equal and opposite. So just as a reminder, we've got kx prime equals negative kx, something that you need from time to time in these conversions. Now let's also talk about the geometry. Remember that the incident angle theta 1, the geometry is written like that. So when we see a, a kx, as we did in the formula for reflection coefficient, we know that kx, we can write that a different way as k times cosine of theta 1. And similarly, the x component of the q vector is q cosine theta 2. So when we see an expression that rs equals kx minus qx over kx plus qx, we can rewrite that first as k cos theta 1 minus q cos theta 2 over the same terms with a plus sign in between them, k cos theta 1 plus q cos theta 2. And then as asserted elsewhere, if I've got kq, kq, since k is directly proportional, since wave number is directly proportional to refractive index, I can rewrite that as n1 cos theta 1 minus n2 cos theta 2 over the same thing with a plus sign. n1 cos theta 1 plus n2 cos theta 2. So this is the sort of general expression that we usually can write for refractive index. So this is true if theta 2 exists. Remember, we could have total internal reflection here where theta 2 is beyond 90 degrees, if you will, where there is no normal geometric as association with theta true, theta 2. So this expression is true if there is a refraction of a beam into a theta 2 direction, whereas this expression here, this is always true. As we'll see soon, even if this beam, even if this Q vector has some complex component to it, because it's not really a traveling wave, but it's an evanescent wave, and we've got total internal reflection. There will be a value for qx. This expression is always true, which is why I teach it. This expression is good as long as you've got a propagating wave in the second medium, and this is the one that is typically plugged into in practical 
problems 